In the past couple years, we have seen more female rappers explode into the mainstream than ever before. Some might even argue that they are currently getting more attention than upcoming male artists. Female artists typically receive much more hate than their male counterparts, but Ice Spice is a little different. When her track Munch exploded on TikTok, everyone thought she was going to be here and gone within a month. But with her most recent collaboration reaching number three on the Billboard Hot 100, her rise has exposed a lot of truths about hip hop that people are not willing to accept. Drink water, y'all. Ice Spice is a product of the New York drill rap movement which was popularized in the mainstream by the late Pop Smoke. Growing up in the Bronx, her parents realized how dangerous the environment was and they wanted to get her out. So they sent her to a private Catholic school in Yonkers, New York called Sacred Heart. Her nickname was Ice, which is short for Isis, which is her real name. And she came up with the name Ice Spice as her Instagram handle while she was in high school. But it wasn't until she attended college at SUNY Purchase when she decided to start actually trying to make music. A producer by the name of Riot saw little freestyles and rap bars she would post on Instagram, and he convinced her to try and take music seriously. He sent her the beats he was making and they started working together. After dropping out of school in her sophomore year, she had nothing but time to work on music. She was posting on TikTok and gaining a following from her Thirst Trap videos. In March of 2021, she dropped her first song and music video called Bully Freestyle, which was a song about getting whatever she wants from men because of her looks, which is common for female rappers but uncommon for New York Drill. See, Drill Rap, more specifically Bronx Drill Rap, is cut throat, in your face, borderline screaming lethal threats to your ops on a bass heavy beat. So Ice's smooth presence and very minimal gangsta energy was a standout for her. Later on in 2021, she dropped her song No Clarity, which sampled Clarity by Zed, a very unorthodox sample for a drill record, accompanied by a video of Ice Spice dropping melancholic in her feels bars while twerking the pain away. Immediately, she was met with hate. This ain't getting us out the hood, it's moving us across the street. As a deaf person, this song goes hard, so we're just twerking to sad music now? To continue growing her brand, she posted TikToks that would easily get attention from people. And this is definitely the type of behavior that female rap haters use to disprove their talents, saying that all they have to do is use their looks, say something sexual, and people will praise them. There are some truths to this. Pretty privilege is a real thing, and we all know that sex sells. It always has. Men capitalize on the same thing in their music videos and visuals, but when one of the women, who may have been in the background, is the one benefiting, it becomes controversial. By mid-2022, she was already being recognized by blogs and media outlets as a promising upcoming artist, even though she only had five songs released. When her On The Radar freestyle was released, she started gaining the respect of rap fans. Since the only thing to focus on was the lyrics she was rapping, people were more engaged. However, most of the world got hip to Ice Spice when she dropped Munch in August of 2022. Funny thing is, a lot of you have just heard the first four lines on TikTok and not even the full song, which is fine because these days that's all it takes to have a hit song. The term Munch was created by Ice Spice because she just needed something to rhyme with, he ate it for lunch. She created an anthem to empower women who get their needs satisfied from a man and kick him out. Ice Spice's confidence and alpha female attitude in this song is pretty typical for a successful female rapper. Hip-hop has been dominated by males, and women are often portrayed as an accessory to them. They call them bitches, hoes, and usually refer to them only in sexual scenarios. Ice Spice and other women are flipping that narrative. But what really sent this record on fire was a leaked DM. Drake messaged Ice Spice, giving her praise on the record five days before it was released. This got a lot of people suspicious. How was the biggest rapper in the game tapped in with Ice Spice before everyone else? Also, how could this private DM get leaked? It's crazy to think that just a message from Drake could bring genuine buzz to an artist. Two days later, she was seen in the crowd of OVO Fest in Toronto beside the rapper. Drake has an entire team dedicated to discovering the best upcoming talent. This way, he is always tapped in with the next trend, can capitalize on a young artist's career, and it makes him look good for supporting the newcomers. But the common thought was that Drake was just trying to sleep with her, which is an assumption that most female artists get as well, that they have to sleep around to get notoriety. How Drake doing you? You gon' give Drake a chance, bro? Her TikTok account was flooded with people shipping the two, hoping they would become hip-hop's next light-skinned power couple. Either way, the music community thought this all felt way too calculated, and it probably was. All of this was just marketing to promote Munch, which went viral as soon as it dropped. The difference between the Munch record and a lot of other similar records from female artists is that men genuinely, unironically, liked the song. They couldn't help but expose their inner baddie while listening to the tune. Oh, you thought I was feeling you? That nigga's a munch. Nigga's a eater. He eat it for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
you 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 said that a little too spicy. <laughs> I like that song. <laughs> I, I, we know, I, and I like her. Joe Budden confidently singing the song simply represented what a lot of men were doing privately. The big smile on his face let everyone know he wasn't ashamed to be a munch. Despite the song being mega viral, it didn't chart on the Billboard Hot 100, and I was surprised to find out it only had 60 million Spotify streams, which is a lot. Don't get me wrong, but the song feels like it was much bigger than the streams represent. I mean, it does have over 30 million views on YouTube. From there, she started doing club appearances and festival appearances with just one song. She was everywhere, doing a full-blown media tour, including a stream with Kai Sinat where everybody got to know about her a little bit more. They got to know her personality, which stood out from the rest. Although her music is very confident, her personality shows that she is a lot more chill and relaxed. Ice and Cleo seem so genuinely chill, I'm shook. I ain't gonna lie, I don't really care for her, but seeing her personality on stream made me actually respect her more. As much hate as she get, she's actually cool as f seems down to earth. She was winning some people over, but others were itching to take her down. They would post videos of clubs that were thinned out and nobody vibing to her song, trying to prove that she was nothing more than a one-hit wonder. But to many people's surprise, the preview of her next song was accepted with open arms, Bikini Bottom, which was literally a SpongeBob sampled drill beat. Then her next, In Her Mood, was also praised. She was gearing up her first project and it couldn't have been executed more perfectly. She didn't go too ambitious. She gave the world a six song EP of all drill records that all sound very similar. A catchy sample with her signature monotone delivery. Plus being in the genre of drill is advantageous for an artist because the fans like that the songs have a very similar repetitive pattern. Basically, she didn't do too much. But her not doing too much and being extremely successful is what spurred up even more controversy. Giving her the daunting label of mid. Y'all love a mid, light-skinned rapper. This tweet came from Chica, a 2020 XXL freshman. Although we don't know if Chica was talking about Ice Spice specifically, this sparked a debate of colorism in regards to hip-hop and entertainment as a whole, said perfectly by YouTuber I am Eloho. In my opinion, Ice Spice is getting the Cardi B package. When Cardi B first hit the scene, it was the same thing. It was the young Latina from the Bronx, surrounded by this black American culture. It's almost as if there's a formula for success for these type of women, right? The argument here is essentially that dark-skinned women have to work harder and be more talented if they want to reach the highest level of success. Kenzo B and Shani Boney are two extremely talented drill artists who damn near rap better than most men, but don't get praised like Ice Spice. There could definitely be some truths here, even with men. I think it's pretty obvious that Drake has benefited from the fact that his racial ambiguity allows him to be a relatable figure for almost all races. Races. He is undeniably the biggest rapper, but a lot of people are quick to say his music is mediocre. But when it comes to Ice Spice over her peers, it seems unfair to say that just because her image is relatable to more people, that is why she is successful. Her beat style and delivery is relatively fresh when it comes to drill music. Plus the biggest counter argument is that simply music is subjective. Sometimes there isn't a specific reason why you like a song more than another. You just do. And at the end of the day, we know that in all aspects of the entertainment industry, your image, likeness, and ability to be marketed will almost always beat out skill. It's been that way forever. As if it couldn't get any better for Ice Spice, she was asked to be on the remix of Boy's a Liar, which was another extremely viral TikTok song by UK artist Pink Pantheris. Both artists have an extremely smooth and quaint delivery complemented by a cute, dancey rhythm. Their collaboration debuted at number 14 on the Billboard Hot 100 after it gained 20.2 million US streams, 585,000 radio airplay audience impressions, and 600 downloads sold in the first week. It would ultimately ultimately peak at number three a few weeks later. Recently, Ice Spice just performed at Rolling Loud and got a way better response than Coyle Ray's debut. Coyle Ray was made fun of for not engaging the audience, she was harassed online, claimed she didn't belong in hip hop, and bullied to the point where she wanted to quit. But for Ice Spice, the commenters were praising her for trying hard and making progress towards being a better performer. Also, Ice Spice's Rolling Loud performance was the second most viewed performance after Playboy Cardi. And after receiving cosigns from Cardi B and Nicki Minaj, Ice Spice is officially on top of the game right now. 
In general, it is harder for a female hip-hop artist to break through to the mainstream. It's no secret hip-hop has a misogynistic past and has been dominated by men. But Ice Spice is the first female artist I've seen in a while to get fair treatment. Every artist is going to be criticized and hated on. Ice Spice is definitely one of them. But with females, the hate and criticism reaches a different level. I think people are giving Ice Spice the benefit of the doubt and genuinely want to see what more she has to offer. Something is different about her that is resonating with a lot of fans. And because of this, I hope people will be more open-minded towards female rap artists in the future. Speaking of music, I just dropped a seven-song EP that I executive produced with Quay the Artist. It's available everywhere, and I would really appreciate if you check out some of the songs. Thanks, and I'll see you next Monday.